Hello, everybody. Welcome to Press uh, with God by Bernice. Um, thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you're having a lovely day. Today's Saturday, the 22nd. Um, I hope you're finding joy in the little things, you know, just being able to wake up every day, having energy, being able to see, being able to smell, being able to just breathe. That's something that we have to be thankful to God for, you know. Um, so thank you for tuning in. Today we are talking about the second part of Proverbs 4. Um, press uh, with God by Bernice is uh, basically the P means prayer. The R means revelation um, of the word of God. The E means edification and encouragement. Um, the S means um, scripture, which is the word of God, the sword, right? Um and the other S is song. So you're going to hear some songs in the background as I talk about what God is sharing and what God is saying. And we are in the book of Proverbs. So we did four, Proverbs 4, part 1, last, um, last Saturday, uh, which was the 15th, I believe. Um, so today, the 22nd, we're doing part 2. So we're going to look at Proverbs, 7, Proverbs uh, 4, 17 to 27, okay? And so let's take a moment of prayer and then we're going to talk about edification, encouragement, and also some things that the Lord wants me to share before we go into the Proverbs 4, okay? So Lord, I just thank you today. We bless your holy name, Father. We come to you as humble, as your humble children today, God. I thank you for my brothers and my sisters that are tuning in today. I thank you for their lives. I thank you for the purpose and the mission that you have for them in the future. I thank you for even now your blessings upon them. I thank you for your grace and your favor upon them. I thank you, God, for the, 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 the places that you've allowed them to be in this season i thank you for the triumph of victory that they've had over the things that the enemy tried to um use against them i thank you god for sh um shooting them through the season god that you have allowed them to be um to be covered to be um to be provided for i thank you for all the things that you were able to send your angels to to align in their lives god i thank you for for, for the breath in their lungs i thank you for their heart posture for you god i thank you for everything that you're doing in their life the seen and unseen so father as we come before you today I pray that, Lord, you decrease me and you increase yourself, God. As I come to you as your, as your, humble, as your humble vessel today, I pray that, Lord, you, 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 you use my mouth as your, as your mouthpiece, God. I surrender my mouth to you. I surrender my mind, my body, my spirit, my soul, my being to you. I surrender this time to you, God. I surrender this place to you, Father. You have your way, Holy Spirit. You are welcome here. I thank you for all that you're planning to do today. I pray that, Lord, you cover us throughout the day, God. Saturate this nation, this USA, God. Baptize us with your water, or with your living water today. Let your water flow through the earth today, God. And let it saturate and purify and, and edify everything that is in this land. And I pray that, Lord, your, your testimony, your word will be a testimony over our mouth today. That we will listen to you and everything that you have to say. And we will be doers of your word and not just hearers only. So, God, I pray that, Lord, you break every chain of the assignment of the enemy and let what you are uh, envisioning for the world and for your people to manifest in the spirit realm and also in the physical God. We are in expectation for greater things. Greater things are yet to come. Greater things are we going to see in this land, in our, in, in our lives. So we bless your holy name, God, and we receive favor today. We, we have favor with men and with you today, God. Let your consuming fire penetrate through every idol, idol thing, every idolatry, every assignment of the enemy, God. Let your consuming fire burn down every sorcery powers, every, um, every witchcraft, every diabolical assignment, every demonic being, God. Let your consuming fire penetrate and rebuke and dismantle and, God, eradicate it with the blood of Jesus. Over this land, God, I pray the Lord, your blood, your, your the blood of Jesus will will saturate this land from California to New York, God, in the east, in the south, in the north, God, in the center, Father. Let the blood of Jesus purify and penetrate through this land and through the atmosphere and through the people, God, today. And in the name of Jesus, I do pray. In the name of Jesus, I do pray. Amen. All right, guys. So we have prayed. We're going to look at the um basically the um the edification that god is telling me to share with you we're going to be looking at that today 
So let's look at um, what God is saying concerning his edification for his people. Uh, when I was praying this morning, what God said was, uh, I asked him, what do you want to tell the people about, you know, to encourage them? And he says, patience. He says, tell them to be patient. So I'm like, okay. So I looked up some words about being patient before the Lord. I looked up some words about what patience mean. Okay, let me go. I'll, I'll be right back. Hold on, guys. All right, so what patience mean? You know, what patience means to the Lord, what he's saying. Let's look at Romans 12, 12. It says, rejoice in hope. Be patient in tribulation. Be content. Uh, be constant in prayer. Okay, so basically be patient in tribulation, whatever you find yourself in right now, be patient. Know that God has everything in store for your greater good, okay, and for the good of those that are around you as well. Um, it says Philippians 4, 6, do not be anxious about anything. We are in Philippians. We already talked about that last week about not being anxious, right? It says do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, in everything, right? by prayer and supplication okay with thanksgiving let your request be known be made known to god let your request be made known to the lord all you gotta do is just pray pray for the lord to do what it is that you're asking and he will you are his child he's not gonna just let you sit there and be in lack no so pray let let your petition go before the lord the good news is that you have nothing to worry about. As long as you are a child of God and you are and, and you are praying to him, he is listening to all your all your, your your prayers, all the fears that you have, every all the worries and anxiety. He says, Cast all your what? Your cares onto me because I care for you. Okay? So and, and it says that um in uh Psalms thirty one Psalms 31, uh, 24, it says, Be strong and let your heart take courage, all you who wait for the Lord. Be strong. Know that once, you, once you're in hardship and once you pass that, you know, that season of hardship, because in, you know, as a child of God, you're going to go through seasons. There are seasons of lack and seasons of plenty, right? In Ecclesiastes, we, we already talked about that. There's time to weep, there's time to laugh, and there's hardship and there is, you know, harvest. Right now, you just have to go through that time that the Lord is taking you through and be sure that when it is all done, He is guiding you through it all. When it's all done, you're going to have your season of harvest. So do not worry. Know that God is with you and He has all, everything in, in, uh, in position. Just, just pray to Him. Don't be anxious about anything. Know that He has you covered and He has everything together and then i want to look at um first peter 5 7 it says give all your worries and cares to god for he cares about you he does right so give all your cast all your cares onto him because he cares first corinthians 13 4 it says love is patient and kind love does not envy or boast it is not arrogant and I want to talk to the people that are married right now. Maybe you might have a little bit of patience for your spouse, for your husband, if your wife, um, for your um, husband, if you're married, if you're a woman that's married. You might have a little bit of patience for your husband right now because you all are, you know, at home. You've been at home for a long time. A lot of people, a lot of people are unemployed right now, and so you might be a little, a little bit agitated. I just want to let you know. Just be patient with your husband. You know, be patient with him. And if you are a man that is watching, be patient with your wife. Be patient with your the person that the Lord has blessed you to be with, okay? Just as, just as the Bible verse says, true love is patient and kind in times of tension with your partner. Think back to why you love them in the first place. When you cannot, you can't stand your husband, ladies. When you're like, oh, he's getting on my nerves. Or, oh. Uh, She's getting on my nerves, you know, if you're a man and you're like, your wife is getting, you are like, your wife is getting on your nerves. And if you're a woman and you're like, my husband is getting on my nerves, I want you to sit back and think back to why you love them in the first place. Why you said, I do. Why it is that you said, yes, 
to your, your friends, I'm going to marry this person. You know? Why you said that? Why you said you're going to marry this man? You told your girlfriends you're going to marry this man because this, 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 that. And God has confirmed it, that you are to be his wife. Think back to that time. Or if, you, if you're a guy, think back to the time where you, you met your wife and you, God confirmed it to you. This is the one that he's appointed for you. And you told all your guy friends, you met your, your wife. Think back to why, you know, you wanted to marry her, you know, as a, as a man, as a husband. Think back to that time. So God is saying be patient with each other and be patient in what he has planned for your life, okay? Be patient in what he has envisioned for your life. Be patient in what he wants to do in your life. He, he is moving on your behalf. Be patient with each other, the Lord is saying. Um, Lamentations 3, 25 to 27 says, The Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the soul who seeks him. It is good that one should wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. It is good for a man that he, he bear the yoke in his youth. So what is it saying is that if you're feeling impatient in your faith, now is the time more than ever to trust the lord he will guide you in all things okay now is the time to trust the lord in all things okay now is the time don't put your faith on on the on the cabinet pick up your faith the bible says that uh faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of god so what do you do you hear you listen to some worship worship has a lot of um word of god and wor a lot of um biblical references okay um you can listen to the bible bible app has a a way for you to play the bible and you can listen to it okay and your faith will be ignited okay so pick up your shield of faith don't let the enemy silence you in in being happy in this time knowing that god hears your cry okay Psalms 41, it says, I waited patiently for the Lord. He inclined to me and heard my cry. Right? The good news is that we, when, we, uh, when we listen closely, okay, for, us, for, for God's word, for his message, we will hear it. You know, the Bible says that God says, draw near to me and I will draw, to, I'll draw near to you. You know, in this time, we need, we need the most to, to be still in that sailor moment and be quiet around everything just silence everything around you okay and focus on the lord it is very important at this time to silence everything around you to turn off the tv turn off the radio turn off everything and just be still in that still moment and hear what god wants to say to you because he wants to speak to you all right so um we have talked about a little bit of encouragement i want to um i want to talk about prophetically what god is saying uh, of course he's saying to be patient with him and to be patient with each other um as he he uh, molds and he he built and he transforms and he basically grow each of us you know it's like we are all like a little plant you know our seeds have sprouted and we're just growing People are growing into little plants. Some people are growing into trees, okay? Some people's flowers are, are coming on. Their fruit is coming on. It all takes time. And so God is saying, be patient with him in what you prayed about concerning what you need. He is working on your behalf. And be patient with each other. So I want to talk about um, this. This is something that is big. It's, it's, it's happening a lot right now. And I, I want to talk about it because it's... Um, it's diabolical what what is happening right now is it's um how do i put it it's a it's an assignment of the enemy and we have to be we have to we have to really be watchful we have to um be mindful of the things that we allow in our our neighborhood we allow in our lives we have to be um vigilant we have to really know what is happening what is wrong what is diabolical so that we are able to pray and 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 turn away from it okay so um i want to i want to talk about this this subject it, it's it's something that has been happening a lot in um 
in this country and especially in the world it's like on the rise a lot of people are doing this and i i want to bring light to it and let you know that this is something that god does not celebrate he does not um um he does not it's not something that's biblical it's not something that god wants us to do so you have to be careful um burning sage is not godly it is witchcraft okay it is it is diabolical it is you entering into a realm of darkness and you don't want to do that burning sage and wearing crystals to i've heard that people are saying that they burn sage to to uh cancel or to um block um um, energy bad energy and and welcome good energy the only thing you need is the holy spirit really god the holy spirit jesus god the father god the holy spirit god the father god the son and god the holy spirit all you need is that i've been saying this so many times i've talked about this um burden of sage and crystals i talked i talked about it i think in may and i've been like i've been talking about it i'm like i don't even know where to begin i'm i'm just like why do we have to do that as christ if you're christian you are not supposed to burn a sage that is diabolical you you have your word which is a weapon your word is your weapon Okay, your mouth is a weapon. When you speak out the word of God, that is the weapon. To block off anything. The the Bible says in Luke 10, 19, it says that, Behold, I have given you authority to trample upon serpents, scorpions. Okay? And all, all the power of darkness. And nothing by any means will ever hurt you. God has given you authority. And that authority comes from you using your mouth to speak the word of god against these things you don't need to burn nothing no did jesus burn anything to destroy any demon any spirit of darkness no he used his mouth he he used his mouth when he cast out demons he used his mouth he used the word of god in his mouth so I want to draw your attention to this because this is something that a lot of people are doing unknowingly. Some people think it's just going with the culture or some people think it's just, it's okay, but it's not. It's diabolical. You are opening doors to the realm of darkness and the enemy. You don't want to do that. So anything you put in place of God, the Holy Spirit, Okay, Jesus, anything you put in place of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit are idols. If you are going to crystals and burning sage to 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 block yourself off from from the enemy, you are not doing anything but you're welcoming more of the enemy. You can't use the devil to block up the devil. You can only use God to block up the devil. You can't use darkness to block up darkness. You can only use light to expose darkness, okay? You can't do that. So make sure that you are in tune with the Holy Spirit. He's a comforter. God has given us him, the Holy Spirit, for a purpose, to help us, to equip us, to help to help us to walk in our authority that, that God has given us. The only thing you need is to be welcoming is the Holy Spirit, okay? If you consider yourself as a Christian, the Holy Spirit is greater than any crystal, any sage, any demonic being, okay? You are opening yourself again to demons and spirit of darkness when you use these things. Instead, pray. Allow the Holy Spirit to be your advocate, your teacher, your protector, your comforter. God is your protector. He has angels. Do you know how many angels? Do you know how many angels there are? <coughs> so many. So many Every Christian is, an, is assigned an angel. You have an angel God has assigned you to if you're a Christian. If you pray the salvation prayer and you've allowed Jesus Christ into your heart and the Holy Spirit into your heart and God into your life, you have an angel. 
use your angel how do you use your angel this is how you use your angel you pray to the lord god please send my angel to do this send my angel to protect me send my angel to do this this is that you don't pray to the angel but you pray to the lord and he will instruct your angel what to do some of you are not using your angels that's why you are using crystals because you and using sages because you feel like you have nothing but you do you have an angel you have god you have the holy spirit in you use it use what god has given you okay um jesus did not leave crystals with us he did not leave the holy spirit he left he did not leave the holy spirit for us to neglect him okay he did not leave the Holy Spirit for us to be like, oh, we don't have the Holy Spirit. He did not leave the Holy Spirit to, to cause us to be like, oh, we don't we don't know who the Holy Spirit is. He left the Holy Spirit with us to to um acknowledge him. Okay? He left the Holy Spirit with us to acknowledge him. To say, we have the Holy Spirit. He left the Holy Spirit with us. When you look in John 14, 26 to 27, he left the Holy Spirit with us. He did not leave the Holy Spirit for us to just ignore him. He did not leave crystals. He did not, God, Jesus did not leave crystals with us. He did not leave um, sage with us. He left the Holy Spirit. He did not leave the Holy Spirit to, 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 for us to ignore him. He said he's leaving us with a comforter and he has to go. Until he leaves, the comforter cannot come. The comforter is with us. It's in you. It's in me. The Holy Spirit is in you and he's in me. He's everywhere. So pray. Don't let this world cause you to think that you are here alone. You are not. God is with you. God the Holy Spirit, okay? He's Trinity. We have the Trinity with us. I want you to look in Genesis. Um... 28:15. okay i want you to look at that it says um john 14 26 to 27 it says but the helper the comforter the advocate the intercessor the counselor the strengthener the standby the holy spirit whom the father will send in my name which is jesus right um in my place to represent me and act on my behalf he will teach you all things and he will help you remember everything that i have told you Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Do not let your heart be troubled and do not be afraid. I am with you and I will watch over you wherever you go. What did he say? I am with you and I will watch over you wherever you go. So why are you scared? Why are you, why are you using the crystals and the sages? When God, when Jesus Christ left us the Holy Spirit, left us, angels on this earth angels come on this earth from heaven to help us every christian has an angel you have an angel with you everywhere you go jesus did not leave us the holy spirit for us to ignore him he left us the holy spirit for us to acknowledge him and allow him to help us so let's cancel the assignment of the enemy concerning burning sage and using crystals we don't do that we are children of the lord we are we are adopted into heaven we are we know who we are we are children of the most high king the i am that i am we are children of the the lord of lords the king of kings the god of gods he is in power he is in authority he has everything under control. So let, let us remove all those crystals and burning sages nonsense. Okay, let us remove all of that. It's none, we should never entertain those things. Never, never, never entertain those things. So I'm just here to let you know that God is with you. Do not allow the enemy to tell you that you need to go and use something to block off any energy the only thing you need is anointing oil honestly like if you have anointing oil use it pray over it plead the blood of jesus over it you 
listen the blood of jesus plead the blood of jesus against anything that is diabolical against any spirit that you think or negative energy or whatever plead the blood of jesus against it the blood of jesus still has power jesus did not die on the cross for us to to think that the only the only time we the, the blood of jesus was at work was on the cross no it still has power it still is happening it still has authority in this land in this world in you in any diabolical thing the blood of jesus plead the blood of jesus over your house over yourself over your mind over your people over your friends over your family and throw away those crystals and sages you are opening doors to witchcraft and the and the assignment of the enemy we don't you don't want that we don't we don't want that as christians we are not like that we have to be set apart okay so please remove those things from your presence the lord has greater things for you to do don't waste your time with the assignment of the enemy this mental the assignment of the enemy pray god rebuke the enemy on my behalf and he will do it all right so god i just pray that lord let this fall on good soil what what you have allowed me to speak to your people that jesus did not leave the holy spirit for us to neglect him he left the holy spirit for us to be open and abide to your principles and allow the holy spirit to help us so I pray to the Lord, let us remember that, Lord, you are with us wherever we go. That nothing by any means will ever hurt us. So I pray for those that are using crystals that, that want to repent. Those that are using crystals and a burning sage that, that want to repent. I pray to the Lord, you forgive them. And you help them and you wash them clean. And you protect them from anything that is not of you, God. And help them to realize that your protection is far more better, far much better far much more better than anything else that they, they will ever see as a, a way of protection your word protect us god so i thank you and i bless your holy name and it's in the name of jesus i do pray amen all right guys so let's look at um what do you call it um proverbs 4 let's look at proverbs 4 okay Ooh, my glasses are all right proverbs 4 17 it says for they eat the bread of wickedness so we already talked about Proverbs 4, 1 to 16 last Saturday. Now let's look at Proverbs 4, um, 1 to, and Proverbs 4, 17 to, to um, 30, 27. For they eat the bread of wickedness and drink the wine of violence. But the path of the just is like the shining sun that shines ever brighter unto the perfect day. The way of the wicked is like darkness. They do not know what makes them stumble. So what is this saying? That the wicked, that um, they eat the bread of wickedness and drink the wine of violence. That people who are, um, that celebrate, um, celebrate evil, they entertain themselves with wickedness. They basically feast on wickedness and violence. Um, instead, we are supposed to what? Drink the the wine which is what jesus's blood right and we are supposed to eat the bread which is his body he said for his uh for communion you know he says do this in remembrance of me right that's what the word said he said do it in remembrance of me do this in remembrance of me instead of tuning into evil um do it in remembrance of me he said so how do you see communion you know what what do you do you have communion do you do you partake in communion a lot of churches have communion but i believe that um some people don't understand the importance of communion communion is very important because um that is how we still celebrate jesus that is how we still remember him okay so if you don't go to communion service, I really urge you to go. I really urge you to go because you are partaking in something that is sacred, something that um, is very, very pure and such a great time with the Lord. Like really, when you eat of the bread you know, which is the flesh of Jesus Christ and 
drink the wine you are doing something that is very sacred and very um i i can't describe how communion communion like how um how powerful it is it is so powerful like you you the first time i had communion i was like oh my god it was such a um It's like when you get baptized, you know, people have like different way of like talking about it. You know, when, when you get baptized, it's like such a pivotal, like amazing experience. That's how I see communion. It's such an, like, a great time of coming together and remembering the Savior, our, our King, Jesus Christ, our, 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 um, our Lord, Jesus Christ, who came to die for us, you know. It's such a great time. I love communion. I don't like to miss communion. So if you've never had communion, you should really partake in it. A lot of churches are doing it virtually. You just need some crackers or some unleavened bread or some crackers and some wine. If you have some juice, get it and do it, okay? Uh, it says that whoever eats my, my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise them up at the, at the last day. And that's John 6, 54. Okay, so do this. It says, it says John 6, uh, 53, says, Jesus said to them, Verily I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Okay, so that is, what, that is the life that we are to cherish, not the life of wickedness and violence. All right, so 18, it says, But the path of, of the just is like the shining sun that shines ever brighter onto the perfect day um and that reminds me that you know um we are to be the light of the world right we are to be the light of the world it says in first peter 5 8 we are to be the light of the world you know we must always um know that we are um supposed to shine our light which is inside of us the holy spirit inside of us in the world wherever we go the way of the wicked is like darkness. They do not know what makes them stumble, right? Because when you're in the dark, you don't really have light. So you, you, you will fall. And you don't know what caused you to fall. Basically, that's what it's saying. So remember to be the light of this world, okay? Um, and that we are to allow God to lead our pathway. We don't lead our pathway. But we allow the Lord to lead our pathway. I want you to look at Genesis 8, 7 as well. So let's continue. It says, my son. I like how it says, you know, my son. Um, some translation says, my daughter. Uh, if you have, like, um, a personalized Bible, it would say my daughter. Um, but I have a personalized Bible, and it has my name in it. Wherever it says, you know, um, he or she, or wherever it says, like, um, them, it says my name. So, um it says my son and i like how it says my son because it's letting us know that you know um god sees us as his children you know he sees us as his children so it says my son give attention to my words incline your ears to my saying and i and um it says this a lot in in uh, proverbs proverbs is repetitive because it wants you to really know and, and put it in your mind and do it, you know. Um, the more you hear, the more you're able to do something, right? Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. It means keep your focus on what it is that God is telling you. That, you know, keep that in your, in your focus. I think that's why it starts off with saying that, you know, um, listen. Because Proverbs 4 start off saying here my children the instructions of your of, of a father so make sure that your ears are always in tune to the lord and in tune to what god is saying um 22 for they are like they are life to those who find them okay and health to all their flesh and that reminds me of proverbs 3 8 it says the exact same thing that those that find wisdom it's like life. Life is precious, and wisdom is precious as well. And it's it's like health to to all your flesh. You know, when you're wise, you do wise things, and it will benefit you 
you know your finances it will benefit your health your body your mind your spirit your peace of mind when you have peace you have good health right because you are walking in wisdom there are things that you say you know what i'm not gonna entertain myself with that because that's gonna just be so stressful and and it's 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 just gonna take my peace away you know for example if if you know um you're having an issue with somebody you know you can choose to just pray about it and let god handle it or you can choose to just be annoyed and and let the enemy just cause you to be frustrated and all that and that can really cause a lot of stress on your body and stress on your body can cause sickness right but if you pray and you cast your burden onto the lord with wisdom knowing that you are okay to to pray to the Lord and he will hear you and he will do whatever it is that you need to do and with wisdom pray and forgive the person and let the person just go and pray for the Lord to handle it you have good health you have peace right and peace helps your health to stay good um 23 keep your heart with all diligence for out of it springs the issues of life again your heart we've heard that saying a lot it springs off all the issues of life you know guard your heart against all guard your heart let no evil thing enter your heart when you find yourself worrying pray when you find yourself you know um having a, a desire that is not of god pray you know pray at it at the origin at the onset of something pray to the lord let prayer be your armor okay put away from you a deceitful mouth and put per, uh, and put perversive lips lips far from you. I like that because what it reminds me of is Ephesians 4 29 to 30. Okay? Ephesians 4 29 to 30. Let's let's look at that real quickly. Ephesians 4 29 to 30. Ephesians 4, 29 to 30 says, Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that in my that it that it may benefit those who listen. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, with whom you are sealed for the day of redemption. Alright? So remove all deceitful and, and, and perversive slips. From you you know deceitful talking remove that from your lips um remove that from your lips so um and speak of things above you know set your mind of things above and not of, and not of things of this world uh, i like philippians 4 8 it says that you know we are to think of what is noble what is just what is pure okay uh what is good we have to think of that and when you think of um those things what you think about you will eventually say out of your mouth right so think of things that are noble think of things that are, that are true think of things that are pure you know it says philippians 4 8 finally brothers and sisters whatever is true whatever is noble whatever is right whatever is pure whatever is lovely whatever is ad ad admir admirable um whatever is excellent if anything is excellent or praiseworthy think about such things okay whatever is true whatever is pure whatever is lovely whatever is admirable whatever is excellent whatever is right and pure and praiseworthy think of those things okay um so it says let 25 let your eyes look straight ahead and your eye eyelids look right before you okay it's very important to look straight ahead don't look to your left or to your right look straight to the lord look straight to the lord and he has you covered look straight to the lord you know look straight to the word of god don't don't be swayed by the things of this world don't be swayed by um you know um the things that are happening in this world don't be swayed by all the religion there's a, there's something called new age religion that is happening where it says that you you mix other religions with Christianity like you mix other religions together no <coughs> no Christianity if 
As Christians, we are to embrace people and lead them to Christ. We are not to be conformed by or or be, be persuaded to join their, their, their religion. No. We are to be looking straight ahead of us with the word of God and helping those that are along the way to know who God is. We're not to mix religions together. No. It's like trying to mix oil and water. It's not going to, it's not going to mix. You can't mix the oil, which is the anointing oil of God with water. No, you can't mix that. That's not it's not going to it's not going to work. You cannot mix the oil of the Lord. You, you cannot mix Christianity with other with other um religion. No. Let us stop doing that. There's so much things that are happening in this world. You know, we are in the last days and you have to be careful what you listen to and what you open yourself to. You have to be careful. Really, you have to be careful. All right. So it says here, um, ponder the path of your feet let and let all your ways be established. I like that. Ponder your part, the part of your feet. It says basically meaning that think about what you do, you know, think before you do something. I like Proverbs 6, 16, 9. I want you to look at that. Um, and it reminds me when it says ponder um, the path of your feet and, and let all your ways be established. It reminds me of the Proverbs 31 woman. Uh, she was very productive. She thought before she did, she did something. She was up early. She managed her time well. She established the things that she was supposed to establish. She left the things that she's, she's supposed to leave in the hands of the Lord. And she did the things that she's supposed to do. She really pondered and thought about what her feet is doing. Where is your feet going? And where is your feet going? Really ask yourself, where is your footprint? Where can people find your footprint? Is your footprint exalting the name of the lord is your footprint going to the right places that the lord has envisioned you to go to where is it where how is your footprint in this world how is your footprint in the kingdom of god how is your footprint in the kingdom of god and it says do not turn to the right or to the left remove your uh your foot from evil remove your foot from evil don't don't be swayed one day you want to praise the Lord. One day you don't. One day you want to be a Christian. One day you want you, you, you want to be in the world. Don't be swayed by this world. Don't be swayed in this in this in in the in the in the land that we, we we live in. Don't be swayed in this world. Keep your focus on the Lord, especially in this time. There's such such diabolical things that are happening. Like today, there are people that are going to burn sages in Washington D.C. They they went at 11, 11 o'clock. And I've been praying. <sighs> you know, God told me that He showed me a uh, in a dream. He He revealed to me, and in the dream, I saw um, you know an opening, and out of it came a um, a rooster. And what God basically was telling me is that you know how Peter denied Christ, and and Jesus said, you know, when the rooster crows, you you have denied me and that is what is happening right now people are turning away from Christ turning away from the power of God turning away from the Word of God and denying the, the, the power of the Lord and denying the, the works of the Lord and turning to evil let us be vigilant let, let, let us let us be really careful let us be careful in, in in what we open ourselves to. Let us be really careful. You know, God has helped us through all our lives. Like, he has helped us through so many things. This is not a time to just neglect them and and, and walk away from the Lord. No, we, we cannot deny Christ. We are to stand with him. I mean, think about it. He left his throne to come here you know as as the, as the word in flesh and to die for you and me and to be crucified and to be to be um beaten and to be um just i mean think about all the things that he went through people denying him people gossiping about him people people you know trying to accuse him of things that he didn't do and then he had to like 
be beaten and then he had to like go on the cross i mean i when i cut my finger when i burn my finger or cut my finger do you know how painful that is think about jesus christ being beaten and then having a, a, a nail go through his hand and be crucified on the cross and be burnt. <sighs> crucified on the cross and like <sighs> he's like on the cross and he's like the sun is burning on him. You know, he's he's being burned on the sun is burning on him and he's on the cross and he's thirsty and his blood is just like draping down and he's just and then they pierced him on his side they mocked him and then we as the children of God just neglect the power of Jesus Christ the the blood of Jesus Christ we just walk away how many of us can really go on the cross and die for our own sins I can't I can know I cannot die on the cross for for my sins or for anybody else's sin I don't want to be in pain but you know who wanted to be in pain for you and me Jesus Christ he laid down his life for you and me so don't neglect him. Don't neglect him. Don't neglect the power of God. I mean, think about it. Like when you are in the sun for too long and you're being burned in the sun, you don't have no sunscreen on. Think about him being being outside and, and, and crucified on the cross for hours, for hours, being burned by the sun for hours, being thirsty. <sighs> anyway, I just, just, just know that God loves you and he's with you. Whatever it is that you're going through, don't neglect, don't neglect the Lord. Don't listen to the people around you like, you know, what Job Job told his wife. His wife told uh, Job's wife told him, "Curse God and die." Don't curse God and die. Know that God allows good and bad to happen. Like Job Job told his wife, "Are you one of those foolish women? Don't you know that God allows good and evil? You know, God allow um good and and bad things to happen." What, let me look at it. What, what does it say? Let's look at here. So it says here, God allows the good and the bad to happen, okay? Um, I want to correct myself. God does not allow evil, but he allows bad things to happen, okay? Um, and that is for us to be strengthened for, you know, like Job went through a lot of things. People might, the bad things that might happen to you, you might, you might confuse and say it's evil things, but... It just got before Satan can can do anything against you. He has to go to the Lord, just as he did with Job, before he allows the evil things to happen. Okay, but he said to her, Job two ten, you speak as one of the the foolish women speak. Shall we indeed accept good from God and not accept adversity and disaster? In all this, Job did not sin with his lips. So God will allow good things to happen, okay, and bad things to happen. Another translation says that, um, the King James translation says, But he said unto her, Thou speakest as one of the foolish women speaketh. What 
Shall we receive good at the hand of God, and shall we not receive evil? In all this did not Job sin with his lips. So meaning that the evil things, you know, God doesn't um, want us to go through evil things. He doesn't desire that for us, you know, but, but he allows it, you know, he allows it to happen. You know, the testing of your faith builds, you know, what perseverance, right? So he allows things to happen. He doesn't want us to, he, he, he doesn't want to see us in, you know, be overcome by evil. No, you know, um, he, he allows everyone a measure of grace for every, for everything that we go through. You know, you will never be tempted beyond your, your capacity to handle it. So God will allow the things to happen, but it will not overtake you. Okay. So remember that whatever you're going through, God has allowed it. If it's evil things, if, if you feel like, you know, you're going through very horrible things or bad things, the enemy can't touch you as a child of God until he goes to the Lord. So just know that if God has allowed it in your life, he has a purpose for it. He can turn everything, everything the enemy uses against you for good. Okay, he can turn it for your good. So whatever it is that the, the enemy is doing, Know that God has a, a reason and he has a purpose and he has a victory for you, for your life, okay? Don't, don't, let, don't let this world cause you to feel like you don't, you don't have an army of the Lord behind you. You do. You have the army of the Lord behind you and with you. And he's going he's, he's gonna to guard you and help you and protect you. Okay, I've been through a lot of crazy things in my life, like a lot of crazy things. All the things that enemy try to do against me, even use people and use, you know, I, I I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna go into it, but there I have fought some 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 things in my life. Okay, and I sometimes I ask the Lord, why did you let this person come into my life and do this? You know, why didn't you tell me? You know, why didn't you do this or why didn't you do that? Do that. But he said, you know, I was, I was with you through it all. I was protecting you. Even, even though you, you saw the person in this way or you, you saw the circumstances in that way, I was protecting you. I was with you. You were not alone in this. Okay? So, back to these crystals and sages. If you feel like you're fighting against a witch, Pray. Pray, use your weapon, your word, your prayer, worship, pray in tongues. Okay, pray in tongues. And don't believe that they have, they don't have power. They don't have any power. God has all the power. Okay, God has given you authority. They don't have any power. They are powerless. When you open your mouth, pray. That's why you got to pray. Okay, that's why you got to pray. Evil is in this world. And God God will allow his angels to come against it. Do not feel that you are alone. Don't don't neglect the Lord. He allows good things and he allows bad things to happen. But he has a reason and a purpose for it. Okay, you might think the bad thing is evil, but you know, if God allows it, he has a plan. So God, I thank you for today. I thank you for your mercy and your grace. I thank you for all that we've learned. I pray the Lord let it be on good soil. I pray that Lord, the people that are going through things that are just so heavy on them, I pray for your grace and your peace that surpasses understanding to fall on them. I pray for John 14, 27, peace, God. And I pray for the blood of Jesus to saturate their minds, their heart, their body, their spirit, their soul, and their circumstances, circumstances God. I pray that, Lord, you will make a way for them. You will provide for them, Jehovah Jireh. I pray that, Lord, you will open a door for them that they will be able to get jobs, God. I pray that, Lord, everything that, that they are holding on to in their heart that is just causing them sleepless nights, God. I pray that, Lord, let them allow you to handle it i pray the lord let, let them cast their burdens on you because you care for them so i pray the lord you give them the 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 um the confidence to pray and cast their burdens on you father i thank you and i bless your holy name and i pray for your 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 plans to to prosper against the plans of the enemy 
We thank you for the blood of Jesus. We thank you for the Holy Spirit. We thank you for Jesus dying for us, God. We thank you for the good and the bad that you allow to happen because you have a purpose for it, God. Sometimes we might call it as evil. Sometimes we, we might call it as bad. But whatever, whatever way we call it, God, you allow it. You allow the things to happen. Everything that you allow, you use it for our good, God. So we know that, Lord, if you allow it, you have a purpose for it. You will never let us go through such evil that we will not be able to handle it. You you don't allow evil things to overtake us. You don't allow evil things into our lives that will just be a burden on us, God. But you allow, you allow the measure of things that we are to go through to help us, to strengthen us, to, to show your power and your might, Father. So I thank you and I bless your holy name. And it's in the name of Jesus I do pray. It's in the name of Jesus I do pray. Amen. Amen, guys. So you have a blessed day. Remember, read your word. Go to the cross of Jesus Christ. You have power over your mouth, in your mouth. Use the word of God. Plead the blood of Jesus. Worship and believe in your heart that God has power. And he is doing everything that he can. You have angels. Use them. Pray to the Lord for them to for him to use to, to send his angels to to on your behalf okay don't look to your left or your right just focus on the lord and turn away from evil okay and love yourself and love people the lord has his protection on you decree and declare psalms 91 and psalms 23 the protection of the lord is in psalms 91 pray psalms 91 over yourself and over whatever circumstances that you have around you okay I love you all, and I will see you for Proverbs 5 next Saturday. You have a blessed day, okay? Bye. Thank you for tuning in.